Hello, my brothers and sisters. What a blessing to be with you on this Christmas day as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior. This event that changed all of human history and ultimately changed our lives for all of eternity. It, it's, it's recorded this way in the book of Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken throughout the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord, the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Lord, we thank you and praise you and bless you for this amazing gift of your son. And Lord, as we look back on that day, we realize that it has changed every day for all of us, for all of eternity. And we are deeply, deeply grateful for the gift of your son. And as we celebrate his birth today, we all just want to express the depth of our gratitude to you and our love for you. Oh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we love you. And it's in Jesus' name, that matchless name, whose birth we celebrate that we pray, amen. Well, now, my brothers and sisters, um, as we continue our time together, I want to encourage you to do something. Um, we have something we started years ago. It was called the gift left under the tree. And what we would do is hand out boxes um, sometime before Christmas uh, that would be a present box. And we would encourage people to find something that they could put into that box that reminded them of God's love for them, how they have seen God's love in their life or their love for God. And so people would put something in the box and then on Christmas Day pull it out of the box and uh, as the last gift, that would be the last thing they would do um, is open that last box and pull out those things they had put in the box and then share with everyone else in the room what that, that gift, what that piece uh, reminded them of. And some examples would be, somebody putting in a Band-Aid and, and it reminded them of the healing that God had brought or somebody putting in a spoon and then just saying, I was reminded that, that every day for my entire life, God has fed me and he's clothed me and he's cared for me. We are not going to expect that here on Christmas Day you would be able to go and find something to put into uh, the box if you haven't already done that. But what we would encourage you to do is just think now as we're together about what it is that if you're gathered with someone else, that you really feel a depth of love and gratitude uh, to your Lord and your God, something that would 
remind you of his love for you or your love for him. So think about that. Um, and after we finished uh, this next beautiful step that we're gonna take together, we're gonna encourage you to share that with the other people who may be with you this Christmas day. Or again, if you're alone, reach out to somebody that you love and just uh, share with them uh, about the love that you have for God and the love that you have for them and the way that you have seen God's love um, in your life. It's gonna be a beautiful way to just glorify him today and give him the thanks and gratitude and praise for the gift that he's given us this day. Well, now we're gonna go into a wonderful time. I want you to imagine this. Imagine that you were to get a Christmas card from God, like literally written to you in his words that he would just express to you his love for you, his hopes for you, his wishes for you, everything that he feels for you, if he expressed that in a card written to you, addressed specifically to you, what would that do? I mean, how would that gift, that card, compare to every other gift that you might uh, receive? Uh, I know that, that most every one of us would say, well, that would be the most treasured gift I could ever receive. Well, the truth is, is he's given us that gift in his word and what we have now is an opportunity to be reminded of some of the things that he has spoken to us through his word. So out of his, his love letter, this, his word that is so beautiful, um, we believe that the Lord really is, has uh, led us to draw out five things that he wants to say to you. And so coming up on the screen in just a moment, you're gonna see these five things that we feel that God wants to speak to your heart about his love for you, his desires for you, and, and what he has given to you. And each one will come up beginning with something written in red that we believe the Lord really wants to speak to you. And then, and then you'll see that actually expressed straight out of, of scripture. And, and so as each of these comes up, you can take turns reading them or one person can read them all, but they'll come up slowly. So there'll be a chance even after they've been read for you to just meditate on them for a moment before you go on to the next expression of his love and his heart for you. After you finish reading this, this love letter from the Lord, this, this Christmas card um, from God's heart to yours, then you'll have a chance to share with the other people in the room or maybe someone on the phone um, what reminds you of the depth of your love for him and how good he's been to you. And so again, you can think of that item, you know, that, that you would be pulling out of the box if you had it with you. It might be a cross that reminds you of the sacrifice he made, or it might be something that reminds you of your love for your family, whatever it is that just expresses the depth of gratitude that floods your heart as you think about all the goodness God has shown you. You get to give him glory by giving him the, the praise and thanks and love that he deserves in response to his love for you. Enjoy this time as you read this Christmas card from God and then share a time of glorifying and praising and testifying to his goodness with each other. God bless you.